and 7, and f of, let's see, f of 5 is equal to 8. So we know two of the factors are going to be what? Negative 3 and negative 10. x minus 3, x minus 7. The only thing we don't know is this value of a that might be here. So if I know f of 5 is equal to 8, that's the same as saying 5, 8 is a point that the graph passes through. So we just plug in 8 and 5 for x and y and solve the equation. So 8 is equal to a times 5 minus 3 times 5 minus 7. So 8 is equal to 2a times negative 2. So 8 is equal to negative 4a. So a is equal to negative 2. So then the equation would be y equals negative 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. This was given. f of 5 is equal to 8. Equals 2x to the third minus x squared plus 3. Find p of i. All right, so p of i, we just substitute i in for x. So 2 times i cubed minus i squared plus 3. i cubed is equivalent to what? I squared. I squared. Negative i. Because i is equal to the square root of negative 1. i squared equals negative 1. Um, i cubed is going to be the same as i squared times i, which is negative square root of negative 1, which is equal to just negative i. So negative 2i. i squared is negative times a negative. That's going to be plus 1 plus 3. So positive 4. So it's 4 minus 2i. Cool. Okay, so you guys evaluate it when, uh, evaluate p of i squared. So the question is, if we know one of the roots is x equals negative 2, find the others. Um, the only approach you can take here is either synthetic substitution or graph it on your calculators. Uh, yeah. But I'm going to do the by hand method. So evaluate this when x is equal to negative 2. So I get 1, 5, 8, 4. Bring down the 1, negative 2, 3, negative 6, negative 4, 0. So now I have x squared plus 3x plus 2, which is a quadratic. So my factors, at home multiplied, give me 2, but when added, give me 3, are x plus 2, x plus 1. So my other two roots are negative 1 and negative 2. So negative 2 is a double root, negative 1 is your other root. 5x So the roots for this, they gave us the x equals negative 1, and then we were able to find the other two, uh, which were what? Negative 2, negative 3. Negative two, negative three. So the next question asks Wait, us to graph this. Which one is that one we just did? Because it was negative 2, negative 2. Yeah, that was a different one. This is the first one we did. So to graph this, we start by graphing our x-intercepts. Negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Can you type it in your calculator? So at this point, you want to see when your graph is below the x-axis and when it's above the x-axis. So I plug in a large negative number. And I'm going to write it out in factored form. So that's x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. So a large negative number is going to give me negative times a negative times a negative. So I know it's below the x-axis at this point. And I plug in, I know I don't have any double roots, so it's going to alternate. I don't know my mins or my maxes, so you can use your calculators to approximate. Uh, when you get to calculus, you'll use derivatives. But that's a rough approximation of what your graph is supposed to look like.